What's up Soul Fam? It's Sundal from Substance Over Style and welcome to a new video. So um, today this has been a really really heavily requested video um, over the years that I've been doing YouTube lots and lots of people have asked me to do a video talking about how I got into modelling um, and yes it has taken me a long time to talk about this mainly just because I didn't feel like it was in keeping with um, with my channel like I mainly wanted to just keep my channel talking about veganism um, morality, universal law, spirituality, you know, all the changes that I was going through. Um, but now I've got to a certain point where um, the goddess Inanna Ishtar is speaking through me and she is wanting me and everybody else to really ground all of that universal energy um, into this physical plane because ultimately what point is it exploring higher realms of consciousness if you can't ground them because we're here to be human right so she's encouraging all of us to use our gifts use our skills use our talents to help serve the collective and a lot of that is going to be in business and um you know enhancing our business acumen so i want to share with you how i got into modeling and if you are wanting to kind of get into this industry maybe this video can help guide you and give you some pointers um now there are you know there's this kind of stereotype about getting into modeling that you know so and so was discovered in a shopping mall at the age of 15 years old and was signed to a huge agency and you know then catapulted to fame and was doing catwalks for Prada and Dior and on the cover of Vogue magazine and that does happen but that's only one route into modeling and there's so many other categories of modeling like I truly believe that anybody can be a model really um, because I've seen so many different types of models in this industry but it's just all about really discovering what your niche is and once you actually discover what your niche is and get into the industry and really slay that particular niche, then navigating other niches is becomes a lot easier. So just a little bit about me, I started as a commercial model, um, and since then I've done uh, fashion, I've done high fashion, fashion editorial, I've done some runway, um, I've done lingerie, swimwear, TV commercials, acting. Um, I, I've really, really slayed in, um, hands feet and legs body part modeling which is seems very niche but it's actually very lucrative in in big markets like new york london paris um there's big demands for body parts models so um you know i've got quite night quite good hands and quite good feet and legs as well um so that's and i've been able to work on some really really um amazing productions like my legs have been in vogue china um i've done cans for Burberry campaign um, I was the hands of a Stella McCartney fragrance campaign um, you know I've worked with a uh, Nick Knight show studio doing hands so I've worked with some really really high profile um, clients doing hands and it's not ju it's not just like a little bit here and there it's literally like one week I'm doing the Stella McCartney campaign the following week I'm doing the Burberry campaign next week I'm working for Samsung so it's been like a really good earner um, now how I got started let's start let's start at the beginning because I can jump around quite a lot so I started modeling um, when I officially started at 19 years old which is very late for the average sort of international fashion slash commercial model generally models will get started like your standard fashion model will get started sort of very young teens will be generally scouts will discover them um when they're a teenager um so sort of 13 14 sometimes even younger than that because it takes a long time to develop a model's portfolio um so generally they'll scout them very young and then while they're still at school then they they'll sign them with an agency just using polaroids so no need for any um 
you know, pay for any portfolio development if you're getting into fashion modeling. Um, fashion models are generally, um, the, the, me the measurements are very specific. And this is kind of like the most well-known category of modeling. So they'll be at least five foot eight, if not five foot nine. If they scout them younger, then obviously they can be shorter than that. And, you know, the... The, the likelihood is that they will grow. Sometimes they don't always grow, though. Um, and I have met models who were scouted at 13, 14, who were 5 foot 6, and the expectation was that they would grow to 5 foot 9, and they stayed at 5 foot 6. Kate Moss is one of those who was scouted at 14, 5 foot 6, and she never really grew, but, you know, she's Kate Moss. So it does happen like that. Um, so they will generally be ideally 5 foot 9 to 5 foot 11 at, for girls. Um, and they will be generally very slim. So the measurements are generally sort of 32, they say 34B, but no models are really actually 34B. They're generally like 32B um, or 30 sometimes, uh, B or C. Um, and then generally around a 24 inch waist, give or take one or two inches. And then um, generally around a 34, 35 inch hip, which is, tiny and, and, I, and I agree it's completely tiny I can talk about that in another video about why I think that that, that is um, and you know we can debate how awful that is in another video but those are generally the standard requirements commercial models are generally a little bit shorter and a little bit curvier um, and then you've got beauty models who can be any height at all. And generally, I know the girls who really slay beauty, their height is completely irrelevant. I know some beauty girls who are five foot two, who are five foot five. And generally, beauty is pretty, can be pretty lucrative. Um, if you've got an excellent face, then that could be something to consider getting into. Um, and big agencies will often have a couple of, beauty girls who might be on the smaller side but who get you know big beauty campaigns or hair 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 tv care commercials um there will be girls who literally just do tv shampoo hair commercials and they don't really do any other type of modeling because other types of modelings will destroy their hair and generally these shampoo commercials are like really big money um so yeah that's th thinking about all these different categories and these different niche niches is a good idea if you're thinking about getting into the industry um so i started at 19 um i was studying at the time um and i was at university i never i never got scouted as a teenager mainly because you know for whatever reason i never really left the house um, I don't really want to talk about that in this video, but I didn't really go out of the house to get scouted. But also, I was never really thin enough. Um, maybe at like 13, 14, I was very, very skinny. But by the time I got to 15, 16, I'd kind of really blossomed into like a 10 or a 12. So even if I had been scouted at sort of, you know, 12, 13, and I was tall enough, I'd started to get to about like 5, 6, maybe almost 5, 7 by the time I was 14. Um... I, I don't think I would have lasted in the industry because I would have I would have developed curves and that would I would have been too big by that point. So by the time I was 19, I dropped the weight down. And I talked about this in my vegan story, um, like how I managed to drop the weight. And, you know, it wasn't super healthy. It was actually just I got really depressed and the weight just fell off. Um, and that's when I ended up starting. Um, I got my boyfriend at the time to just take some Polaroids off me, some just very natural snapshots. Um, and I sent them to a local agency. Now, this agency wasn't a particularly high fashion agency. They were just a very commercial lifestyle agency, um, had a lot of corporate clients and things like that. So for that type of agency, you don't, you don't even need to be skinny. You don't need to be young like they had models up until they're 60. So that was my introduction to the industry, you know, working with all different types of models, like models in their 50s, models who are, you know, all different types. And, you know, doing really corporate things for like the NHS. And my first ever job was for was for Learn Direct, which is basically like an adult education program. And they wanted a teenage single mum who is South Asian and the agency signed me up straight away as soon as I sent them my pictures um, 
they called me the next day and they said, you know, we're really desperate for South Asian faces because we, there just aren't that many South Asian models and we would just love to have more South Asian faces on our on our books because we get so many requests from clients who want South Asian models and, you know, there's a demand for it. That was in that niche, which was, you know, commercial, lifestyle, corporate stuff. In fashion and sort of the commercial that you get in London, because this was not in London, this was in Sheffield and Manchester where I first started modelling. And there's not really much exciting sort of high fashion glamorous at that time. Now it's different because now things are digital, everything's gone online, there's social media. So the, the whole landscape of the industry has completely changed. This was more than 10 years ago. Um, back then, it was all just sort of leaflets and brochures and things like that. Um, you know, and tech, a lot of tech stuff. So, you know, smartphones and things like that, that, you know, were just coming out. There was work for that kind of stuff. Um, in London, it was more sort of fashion and hair and things like that. So when I moved to London, they're actually, you know, London is where you have all the big fashion agencies like Storm, Models One, Premier, Select, and they're very stringent with their requirements. So they will be looking for the sort of really young, fresh faces, tall, skinny. You've got models who are traveling from all over the world coming to try their luck in London. So it's very, very competitive. But then you've also got smaller agencies who do more sort of commercial stuff and their, their requirements are less strict so they'll take models who are curvier who are shorter and generally to get into these types of agencies you do need to pay for a portfolio or you did back then now now it's different like now everybody from what I've heard all new models need to pay for portfolios but we can kind of talk about that like we can go more in depth into that in a separate video um for me, because I was older getting into it, like I did it throughout uni, I studied architecture at uni, um, so I never really saw modelling as like, you know, this big career that I was going to have, it was just something that I just wanted to do just, you know, for myself, and um, because a lot of people at school had told me that I should try and get into it, you know, I had a lot of people telling me, you know, you're so pretty, like you're the prettiest girl in our year, you should really be a model, but, you know, I just never really thought that I was good enough, um, and I did send a couple of pictures that, you know, my dad had taken off me in the living room to like Storm and Models One. And I never heard anything back. You know, they get so many hundreds of applications every day that, you know, you kind of really do have to go in for the open calls if you want to get an, an answer. Um, so um, I really heavily researched the industry um, while I was, well, it was actually... No, while I was a teenager, before I even got into the industry, I was kind of going on a lot of message boards and researching the industry and, you know, finding out about the different categories. For a while, I did consider getting into glamour modelling, which is kind of more sort of racy, kind of men's magazines and things like that and topless kind of stuff, because the requirements for glamour are again a lot less strict than for fashion there's no there's no real height requirement and the size requirements are much more diverse so it would be like a size 6 to a size 12 and it was generally more lucrative fashion is much more competitive much harder to make a living in fact most high fashion models actually don't earn anything really they actually get into quite a lot of debt they'll fly themselves all around the world to participate in fashion weeks um, a lot of the time they're not getting paid or they're getting paid in trade um, and you know just to get an opportunity to be in high fashion campaigns which can be very lucrative um, they're kind of less and le they're becoming less and less lucrative as you know time goes on modeling now is a lot less lucrative than it used to be um, it used to be that you would get paid a couple of grand to do um, just a small campaign like you would get paid maybe 10 grand to do a high, like a, a campaign for a high street brand it's a lot less than that nowadays like now to do a campaign a lot of the time models are getting paid like one or two grand and this is in pounds um that used to be your standard day rate when i first first got into the industry standard day rate was a thousand pounds um Gen I think some of the higher agencies will still charge that sometimes, but generally, like, 
it's not it's not really um getting those kind of rates are, is a lot harder nowadays um so yeah to get into the commercial side of the industry it was the requirements were you know that you could be older um you know for commercial they have they you know they have demands for models who are you know in their 30s 40s 50s 60s you know we're talking about tv commercials um print advertising just all different kinds of things corporate so a lot of the requirements for that are a lot more diverse but they do these kind of agencies that represent commercial models they want to see portfolios because a lot of the time with commercial models they are generally models who started as fashion models but then you know as they get older then they move, shift more into the commercial side of the industry so they already have a portfolio so if you're just getting into the industry in your 20s or 30s you would have to pay a photographer to shoot a portfolio for you um so i did that um, because by this point, you know, as I'm starting to graduate from university, um, I, you know, initially I just thought, you know, I studied architecture, I'm going to just go and become an architect. But I knew deep down that it wasn't what I really wanted to do. Um, I actually mainly wanted to be a fashion designer, which is now what I'm doing. I'm launching a clothing line. Um, but I was kind of encouraged to go for like something more safe and more academic. So I ch ended up choosing architecture. But as it was coming time for me to graduate from architecture, I was booking more modeling jobs through just through my agency that I had while I was modeling because I was doing it on the side. And a lot of people just encouraged me. I met a lot of models who were doing it full time. And these models were, you know, quite diverse um, because, you know, in Manchester and outside of London, you do have quite diverse models. Um, and a lot of them did it full time. And I was, I asked them, I was just like, how do you manage to get enough work and do this full time? And I asked them questions and, and they, t you know, told me how they manage their careers. And a lot of them really encouraged me. They were just like, you have really good potential. Like you should consider moving to London and trying to sign with one of the big agencies there. And I was just like, I don't know, like, I'm not that I'm only five for eight. Um, and at this point, I was sort of 21 now, which I was told was like ancient and, you know, it's going to be impossible for you to get into the industry at that age, um, which isn't really strictly true. You know, if you have really good potential and you're willing to work hard um, and you're willing to hustle and build your portfolio, you can definitely sign with the bigger agencies, especially because they take models from other markets. So if you've been working, say, in Australia or you've been working in Milan or you've been working in Cape Town, you know, it might be your first time coming to London. So you might be 24 by this point. Um, and, you know, you've had a long career. They don't know. Like, they don't know who you are. So, you know, if you pay to have your portfolio shot and it's got all these beautiful pictures and you might have maybe travelled around the world and shot these pictures in other markets, they don't know if you've been modeling or doing some they don't know like I met a model when I was in Bali I met a model who was 38 and she'd been modeling for a year she'd only just got into the industry and she's beautiful you would never know that she was 38 by looking at her so you know it's just that like because I started in London and London has such strict requirements I just had these limiting beliefs that I wasn't that I wouldn't be able to do it and you know I was too old and not tall enough um, and also you know when I started the industry was nowhere near as diverse as it is now I mean it was very very white and if you weren't white it was going to be hard for you to sign with an agency like I looked at all the boards of all the major agencies in London and I think there was one or two South Asian girls like there there were maybe there were a couple of East Asian girls a couple of black girls a couple of mixed race girls I literally I counted two South Asian girls um so that was kind of tragic um but I was still nonetheless encouraged by a lot of people that I met to, you know, really try my luck in London. And my parents lived in London. So I knew that, like, you know, it wasn't going to be that much of a risk. And by this point, I'd already 
I'd graduated from uni and I was supposed to be applying for architecture internships and instead I found while I was working on my CV I just started sending my pictures to agencies all over the UK generally commercial agencies every single one of them signed me up so I was just traveling all over the UK to go and meet with these agencies I was getting bookings coming in and before I knew it I was modeling full-time I was having like three bookings a week I was traveling all over the UK and I was just like right I guess like you know now that I've graduated I wasn't really gonna stay in Sheffield because why would I stay there when most of the work is in London and my parents lived in London anyway so I just moved back in with my parents and I started sending my pictures to agencies in London and I ended up, so I had a couple of meetings with um, a few agencies, some of them were smaller agencies, they all signed me, and then I started approaching, once I got my confidence up a little bit, then I started approaching the bigger agencies, and um, I got an immediate response from an agency called Nevs, who are a very, very strong commercial agency, so they kind of bridged the they kind of bridge that gap between fashion and commercial. Their men's board is extremely fa high fashion. Their women's board is more commercial. But generally, like, this is just my opinion, like, you want to try and be more commercial. And if you are a commercial model, there's no shame in that. I know the industry kind of glorifies being high fashion, but there's not really that much money in high fashion. You'll be shoot if, you, if you're shooting for, you know, Vogue magazine or Harper's Bazaar, and I know because I've shot for Vogue, I shot for Vogue China, I shot for Vogue Thailand, I shot for Indian Harper's Bazaar four or five times. I've been on the cover of Vogue Thailand. I've been on the cover of... Uh, Indian Harper's Bazaar Bride, um, shot for Elle magazine. I've shot for a lot of Condé Nast publications in Asia and also in the UK. They don't pay. They don't pay. They, you'll maybe get 50, 50 euros, 50 pounds um, for being in the magazine. It, the, the, the only reason why you, you people aspire to it is because it's exposure. So once you get the exposure of being in those magazines, then you might get booked for... Um, campaigns off the back of that and also you can increase your rate so for example if I'm on the cover of Vogue magazine then my day rate for um, catalogue jobs will now be higher because I'm that girl so that's kind of how it works so you kind of really want to be aiming for being more of a commercial model and then you know catalogues like you know I know that sounds like for people who've been brought up on Britain's Next Top Model and America's Next Top Model that kind of talk about catalogue as if it's like something like that's where the money is like boys and girls e-commerce is where the money is like yeah being in like high fashion campaigns is great and it's very lucrative um, but it's like a very small percentage of the industry if you can get into that then by all means do it but the you know you will if unless your body type is naturally you know very tall and very skinny for what those girls have to do to get down to the measurements that you need to get down to to do the fashion weeks and then ultimately end up in the high fashion campaigns personally I just don't think it's worth it um, but you know it's great if you can get it by all means it's you know it's fantastic and you know it's beautiful you get to shoot these beautiful you know campaigns and you know and it, it's artistic and it's it's there's a reason why I gone into this because I just love design I love art I love creativity um but also with modeling it's not the it's not a consistent career so you really don't you might want you know one week you might do a campaign for 10 grand like two weeks ago I did a beauty campaign that paid like you know it was like eight grand um which nowadays is quite difficult to get um and I, I I'm, I'll do a separate video about it but I, I used law of attraction to book that campaign and it was really um it was a great win for me but then the following week I didn't have anything like you know you and that sometimes that will be even for a month, like, you know, one month you might be working every single day, even. Sometimes I've been booked every single day. Um, and then the next month you might not have anything on at all and you'll just be like, oh, my God, like, it's over. They don't want me anymore. I'm too old now. Like, I better quit. Like. So you just got it. You've got to have something else on the go. You've got to be doing something else. So over my 15 year modeling career, I have done acting, 
I went to fashion college, I went to London College of Fashion and got a diploma from there. Um, I started doing fashion styling, which really helped my um, modeling career because um, in the beginning I paid for a photo shoot and that, the, it pays for itself because once you pay for that initial portfolio, make that investment in yourself, I booked I booked a couple of jobs on the back of it and I made the money back in two weeks. So this is what I say because I now do scouting and development as well and I put my information in the description box of all my videos. Um, so if you are interested in getting into modeling, you can send me your pictures or if you want coaching um, or consultancy, then you can contact me and we can kind of talk about, you know, where to put you if you if you're interested in getting into other niches within the industry. Um, so this is some of my my models that I've scouted um, aren't, you know, your typical 13 year old. Um, you know, I scouted one girl who's in her late 20s and she doesn't look it. She's got amazing potential. Measurements are on point, um, but she needed to do a lot of work on her portfolio. Um, and, you know, I tell all my models that I've developed, like even if they already have a portfolio, you still need to keep on updating it. You still need to keep it relevant because fashion changes even if you're a commercial model you're still fashion fashions in com commercial stuff change as well so you need to keep and your your face changes your look changes so you need to keep on updating it all the time so my styling really helped um d develop my portfolio like i you know i signed with nevs and in less than a year my portfolio was as strong as any model who'd been who was on the main board who had been doing modeling since she was a teenager because I hustled. And, you know, I do think that with, <coughs> <coughs> with any industry, if you're getting into an industry in which, especially in which, you know, they don't teach you how to do it, seek out a mentor. I was very, very lucky because the first day that I walked into Nose and signed with them, um, I met my mentor and it was a girl called Juliette Johns who I always have so much love for big sis because she helped me so much um I really looked up to her because she got into the industry a lot later as well she started at 24 and uh which is really late um and uh I think in Miami which is a more commercial slash swimwear market um and she kind of got an in because she was dating this guy who knew the um, bookers and he recommended her um, but she's be a beautiful girl really good proportions she's not super tall and so I really kind of latched on to her because I saw her portfolio and she'd shot with David LaChapelle and Rankin and she'd walked for D squared at London Fashion Week and you know she'd shot for like Vivian Westwood and she'd done some really big things um, despite the fact that she she's not that tall and and you know the fact that she got into the industry later but she's just got a very strong high fashion look and so I just asked her I was just like how did you do it tell me what to do and you know I was so naive back then and I was so green and fresh off the boat that I just had no shame and just asked people for help and she was really happy to help me like this is kind of the relationship between a mentor and a mentee it's mutually beneficial because people do actually want to pass on their wisdom and she was quite happy to do it. Like she signed with the agency and they were like, you know, agencies will do this and they do this to all models. Like I recently connected with the girls from Model Mafia in New York. We've just set up a new branch here now in London. It was set up by Cameron Russell and Anya Rose, um, who are two, uh, I don't know if you've heard of them, but Cameron Russell in particular did a very um, amazing TED talk, which I will link. Um, and yeah, both of them are really involved in um, act model activism. So getting models to use their platform to positive cha for positive change, but also creating a community of models who can all help empower each other, which is vitally important because agencies don't really like agencies are there to make money and yet they should be guiding you and the best ones do but sometimes they really don't and sometimes they have so many models on their books that they don't really give you any personal mentorship and if you're young and naive and you don't know how the industry works you don't know what the fuck's going on they send you here they send you there most models are too scared to ask oh, how much am i getting paid what's the usage on this that most models don't even know what the term usage even means um and, you know, this is why, you know, learning the industry and researching the industry is so important for your personal empowerment. Um, 
where was I going? I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> oh, what was I saying? Yeah, so anyway, agencies won't tell you what's going on a lot of the time. They don't really explain certain things. And most models are too young to ask and they're too nervous to ask. So that's why they get exploited. So having mentors in the form of older models who are now like, you know, maybe on the classics board, you know, models who are kind of now interested in pursuing other areas. This is the other thing about, you know, models being so young and a like that there's no di age diversity it's not that there's no demand for older models because i think that there is like you know with my friends as we've got older we've actually become more successful but what happens is you get tired of traveling all the time you can't be bothered to just keep on doing endless free shoots to build your portfolio you're not as hungry for it as you were in the beginning and you're sick of being treated like a living doll and you just become interested in other things a lot of them have families they get married they settle down um so i think that's a lot of the reason why models are young because after a while they just move on to other things um and models who want to stay in the industry are still working. Like I know a lot of models who are kind of in their 30s, like me, for example, who are still working and who are still doing well and who are still banking. Um, so I think it's a fallacy. I think it's just, you know, they just don't want to do it anymore. Um, so if you are a little bit older and you're wanting to get into the industry, understanding the machinations of how the industry works and how you can kind of get your foot in the door is helpful because I do think that there is demand especially now with social media and diversity being such a huge trend there's going to be more and more demand for older models um but yes uh I've talked for like half an hour now and I don't even know I, I have not even like scratched the surface of the story um so yeah I'm gonna I'm, do, I'm gonna just end it there um but yeah just to seek out mentors um find your niche um I'm going to do more videos on this, so please um, give me some questions in the question box below, and I will add it to the list of videos. I've got such, I've got so many, I've got such a long list of videos that I need to make um, for you all. Um, so yeah, and if you want like any kind of personal mentorship, I am offering that. I do do model scouting and development now, not just for models. I also do it for artists. I've been art scouting and developing makeup artists and hairstylists and little bit videographers as well and kind of placing them with mainly with agencies and production companies in India because I was approached by my agency in India to kind of scout for them. But I'm now offering it. Um, globally um, so if you want to work with me then please feel free to reach out um, I've got my information in the description box below um, or just yeah put a comment box in the put a comment put a comment in the comment box um, and yeah I will answer your questions okay that's it so um, I will love you and leave you and I'll see you in the next video one love you introduced to LSD and unless you've, you've taken some other well, like persons like um, marijuana or something. Um, well, you know, it's an altogether new thing. And, um, you actually can ex have an, a religious experience.